G'day folks, Chilled here. I listen to most of my music through my trusty JBL Charge 2 Plus. Uh, I've had it for a few years and it works great. Let me say that there's a, a lot of fake ones around and this video is not aimed at and will not help you with one of the fake JBLs. The easiest way to find out if it's a fake JBL was did you pay over $100 for it or did you buy it at a roadside market, flea market stall on the side of the road, uh, a cheap store in a, in, a, in a mall somewhere in Asia and you paid somewhere like $10, $20 for it if you did. It's not a real JBL. It's not a real JBL if it's a new one. It's certainly a fake. Those videos online don't help. Inside those systems is completely different. Uh, this video will not help. It has to be an authentic, real JBL Charge 2 Plus. Anyway, that put that aside. Um, if yours is real and your battery has failed, uh, I've just finished putting in uh, a new battery that I got, in my case off Lazada. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, you'll get them off Amazon, uh, eBay, uh, whatever. So first off, make sure it is a real JBL. You see with mine when I turned it on, it had the little red light. No matter what I did to charge it, suddenly uh, it was no longer uh, going to hold a charge. The white light wasn't coming on. Now, it could sometimes be that charge port. Um, some people have you know, uh, slapped in the, the USB too hard and, uh, you know, and broken their charge port, but if you don't think you have and you've not done anything you know, uh, heavy handed to it, um, yeah. So first off, if you've got the battery delivered, you're not going to need a lot of tools. There's the little um, blue spudger, spudger, whatever they call it. Usually you'll find them in, a, in an iPhone repair kit as well. Um, there's the, the battery. Really important with these batteries is that you get the right one, and I'll go into that later on. Um, the right one for your JBL Charge 2, because there are two different versions of the JBL 2 Charge Plus. All you're going to need is uh, one of the little, you know, a couple of screwdrivers, a couple of Phillips head screwdrivers, plain. There's no Torx bits required. Even in my case here, I'm just using one of those cheap uh, $2 sets, you know, from the $2 store, the 100 yen store, or whatever. Anyway, so let's get into it. So first off, we've got to get the, uh, the mesh sides off this. You've got to be careful. You don't want to scratch them, bend them, uh, you know, crack them in any way. What you've got to do is get it right in the corner at the bottom with the little plastic spudger. It's soft enough that it won't scratch the screen, but yeah, if there's any damage, it'll be to it. So get it right down in the corner. Um, be careful, once you do pop a corner out, you, you feel along the bottom to get the bottom out. You, you can't just rip it off. You'll find that the top section won't pop off. You've got to then get the spudger in your thumb and push down on the top in a couple of places to basically push it down and get it out of the little groove that it sits in. Once you've got it open, you'll find, like for instance now, um, you know, the, the white cover there for the battery. You know, if it was just the battery that clipped in, you'd unscrew these six, take it off, and swap the battery out. But unfortunately, the battery cables uh, go in one end. Now, the good part is you just have to identify which end um, it is that's got to come off. You don't need to take both ends off. So we have to take the other side off. We pop the other side off. We need to get to all four screws that hold the end piece on. We just need to identify which one it's going to be. Same again, down in the corner, pop one corner, feed it along the bottom. Once you've got those off, you can pull it up a bit, but you will not get it all the way off without damaging it. So then push down again on the top in a couple of places with your thumb. And once you've done that, you'll get it out of the groove and it comes off. Now, be careful, you don't want to scratch it, but you, know, you do have to put a little bit of force onto it. Once you've got that off, you can see the speakers. Be careful, they're very uh, high magnets in the back of them. If you, while you're unscrewing things, if you drop a screw, it's going to go inside and it's going to get stuck on them. If so, there's only four screws holding them on. So here's the four screws that we have to take out once we know which end. So now we've put off the uh, white cover off the battery to have a look and see which end is going to come off. I'll, uh, I'll speed this up now. There's no, no need to watch me uh, slowly undo these six screws.
Once we have those off, we can just get uh, either the spudger again or you know, uh, the end of a, a flat bladed screwdriver or whatever and, and get the battery out. Lift up one end, pull it out. Some of them have got some sort of double sided tape on them so they might be a bit sticky and need a bit more force. You can see that the, uh, the cable is going in obviously inside and it's going into that end. So the end that we need to remove uh, to unplug the battery are these four screws on that one end. We don't need to do anything with the other end. So once again, there's the four screws. I'll speed her up again and get those off. Try to keep all of these screws separated though. Some of them are different lengths, so you don't want to. And particularly if you're if you're going to be putting this back together after you've ordered your battery and it takes a week or two to, uh, to get the battery in, to keep them all so they don't get lost, um, I tend to just then, once I've got the part off, which comes off fairly easily now, um, just a bit of force and it'll come off, is to screw those screws back into the, uh, the, the places that they came out of, just so you don't get them mixed up and you don't get them lost. Now there's four screws that are holding this cover in place. This cover does actually look like it's a speaker uh, itself. It's not, it's just a cover. We'll speed it up again, take that off. And once we get that off, we can have a look inside. We'll see the boards that the system runs on. And you'll also find there's the, uh, the actual power from the battery where it plugs into. So we just wiggle that a little side to side and that pops out and we can get out the old battery that's failed. Now I've said earlier and it's really important there are two, two different revisions of these uh, JBL chargers. The difference, or the main difference in this case anyway, when it comes to the batteries is, now here's the part number of mine. That's not necessarily yours. You need to find out which one it is. The important thing is that getting the right one, these connectors have a ridged side and a flat side, and you need to make sure that you get the right one. And to identify it, it may actually take an email to your supplier. Um, some of them will want you to send them a photo to make sure that they're sending you the right one, because as you can see there with the arrows, the two sides aren't identical and there's red and black cables and that's the polarity. If you get it the wrong way around, it's not going to work. So you have to get the right one and that's the difference between the two revisions. So as you can see with the connector, it's got two little locators on one side and that's because where we took it out of, it can only go in one way around but the two different revisions have the black and the red cables the opposite way around. If you get the wrong one, you'll have the polarity wrong and if you plug it in, um, there's a good chance you'll have a big problem there. Reassembling this is pretty simple. I'm going to speed up most of the process because it basically clip the battery in, push it in, get the little white clip. It can only go in, as I said, one way and, and provided you bought the same polarity battery as, as your system came with, there's no problem. You may need, uh, like I did, to push the, uh, the little connector back in carefully with, a, say, a flat bladed screwdriver just to, to get it all the way in. It's just a matter now of screwing all the covers back on. Make sure you get the JBL end piece on the right way around so that it matches the other end. I think it can only probably only go on one way anyway. And once again, we'll speed this up. Back on that end cover, it's probably worthwhile before you assemble the whole thing just to make sure that the battery is connected and it's all working okay. So make sure it'll actually take a charge first, plug it into a USB source. So 
So as you can see here, like in my case, it's now flashing a nice white light instead of the red light that it was earlier. So the battery is taking a charge. All together, nice and fast. As you can see, it really only takes a normal little screwdriver. It doesn't take a lot of time. The only hard part is basically the online part, researching and getting the right battery. If we put those outside covers back on, they clip in, push the top in, pop the bottom in. Just use your thumb. Once she's all done, power it up, make sure it all still works. Good as new. Now we'll plug back in the USB and charge her up for a little while so she gets a bit of a charge before we can test it. Then the last thing to do is to after she's taken a bit of a charge, do the Bluetooth pairing, and here we go. All working great, all paired fine. And as you'll probably hear, you'll play this very well. It's fantastic sound out of these little speakers, and they're definitely worth a repair. My battery, I think, cost me about $20, $25 delivered. It's certainly worth it when you've got a speaker that's worth over $100 to do that. Anyway, hopefully that was of use to someone. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this. I've got much more travelling, food and tech updates to come soon. Cheers.